right, thank you very much indeed. Hello and welcome to The Last Right Stuff of the Week. I'm Matthew Wright, it's the 22nd of January, the weekend is almost here, and to get you in the mood, we have the panel, Mr Dave Gorman, ladies and gentlemen. Far too shy and modest to plug the fact that he's back with his sit-down, pedal, pedal, stop and stand up tour next month. It's a hot ticket, uh, particularly for Right Stuff viewer Gaynor Michael, who's been in touch. Uh, the Nottingham-based nutcase uh, pinged me an email saying she bought tickets to see the human beefcake that is Dave Gorman. Beefcake, by the way, is the word she used. Okay. Uh, and she's going to see her on February the 13th. And then her, uh, her man proposed. And they're getting married on the same day. And she's, she's emailed to say she can't make up her mind whether she's going to blow out her wedding or blow Dave Gorman out. <laughs> out. It, it's a tough call, obviously. <laughs> There's a lot of this proposal thing going on, isn't there, really? Uh, th yes, there seems yeah. to be. Who knew that Would you, would, would you blow out your wedding for a, for a, a uh, Well, obviously, if, you know, if I get a lucrative gig on the day of my wedding, then <laughs> the, the wedding's <laughs> off. But, uh, no, no, it's a ridiculous thing. Go and go, go to your own wedding, dear. And the <laughs> obvious advice. And the time? Uh, 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 someone died? <laughs> I'm mourning the end of my week on the right oh. side. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next to him, Gail Porter, ladies and gentlemen. Looking, and, and, and I know you don't believe me, but I think looking incredibly uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for someone who was out uh, very late last night with I your band. I was. I was, yes. I was man the band that I'm managing, New Vinyl, MySpace, New Vinyl 1. Just to oh, there they are. There they there are. You go. They're a handsome bunch of boys. Yeah. Um, they had a big gig. They were headlining the Monarch last night, which in was London. great, yep. uh, in London, in Camden Town. And I was very well-behaved up until about 11 o'clock. So, you know, do industry, chat to everyone, going, yes, this is my band. The minute the industry went, I had a few glasses of wine. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I need to go home. I'm going, I'm going to work with Matthew in the morning. So, yeah, no, they did brilliantly. It was, I, was, I was very Good. proud. It was really Good. exciting. Yeah. Still don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and no one proposed to me, either. Oh. There you go. Don't again, want to. Anyway. Again, though. Yeah, again. Yeah. Well, I don't remember what happened the first time. Do you not? I know. <laughs> anyway, that's another now then, story. <laughs> let's meet our special guest this morning. It's Scott Caporo! <laughs> 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 Comic who enjoys giving daytime TV presenters a white knuckle ride, and that's just on television. <laughs> Be nice, Scotty. It's easy to forget he's fronted a string of hard hitting, deep probing TV documentaries, including the truth about gay animals. Uh, but tomorrow, he's doing what he does best, making people laugh at London's Chuckle Club, uh, which is in King's College, isn't it, on the Strand? Somewhere there, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, what, what can people expect? This is stand up, stand up. Stand -up. Yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't written the set yet. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to talk about Obama a little bit and then um, about uh, marriage. I'm thinking of getting married myself, maybe. Just because everyone else is doing it. Why can't I? And uh, I'd like to marry a lady and have you... a baby. Oh, and, uh, we're going to get on to that. fly a moment. helicopter. And, third, third. <laughs> and um, we'll see what happens. No, and you know, I, I, I haven't done stand up in. Th over three months, which is a long time for a comic. I know you take longer stretches in between, maybe. I, I you... took four years off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds lovely. But I've been doing a play in San Francisco, so... I was going to say, because that's a straight play. It was a modern twist on Shakespeare. It so. was, yes, yeah, as you like it. straight play day. with you in it. Well, yeah, although great. I played an old gay with AIDS. That was hilarious. <laughs> and um, <laughs> comic relief. It was really interesting to be around actors, because they're so spoiled. I don't know if you've done any acting other than in your personal life, but actors are so... <laughs> They're, um, they are, they're so privileged. So even, the actors are like, ooh, that audience tonight was terrible. I'm like, you don't know, a bad, a bad audience stabs you in the neck and gives you scabies. Those people were nice, they're just sitting and listening. You have to get used to that as an actor, that people just sit and listen properly sometimes, you know, and that was, it felt like vacation being in a play, but now I'm back at it on the stand. You know what I'm, I'm getting from this? Because I, I heard that you had considered actually uh, going into politics, and I think you really should have done, because this... <laughs> this did you, I, stu you studied politics? I did, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did the whole political science thing at school, but I, I wanted to do it, but, you know, it, it, it conflicted with my theatrical <laughs> endeavours, and, you know... Matthew, at my heart, I'm really an artist. Uh, but and... talking of politics, did you not have a really unusual celebrity crush? Uh... A celebrity crowd. I've had several. I can't think of. Who <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Brown, I heard. Oh yeah. Well, I no. met him at that uh, that cardigan-wearing lesbian book fair. What is that? The 
I the hay festival. festival. Yeah, the hay festival. Yeah. I met him at that. And, uh, I <laughs> there I go. <laughs> Jesus. Just where's, listen, where, where's a sniper when you need one? <laughs> uh, the Guardian is so humorless. But anyway, I was there. I, I've never had more hate mail than after a set of the Guardian Book Fair. But anyway, I was there and I met Gordon Brown. We shared a stage and I met him back. And I'm, he's tall. He's very attractive in person, you know? Yes. You just have to focus on the one eye. But once you get used to that, it's, it's no, it's. Because the other one wanders a bit. It's kind of, no, it's, it's, anyway. It was great, and he, uh, he was very nice, really charming. Real, and uh, total he, brainiac. He needs to be, you could say. Uh, yeah. now, um, I the, love the fact that on, on Tuesday and Wednesday, you thought I was being risky. <laughs> <laughs> I think so far, so good. I'm fine. fine. No, he has very large hands, and he held my hand for a very long time. <laughs> Daddy. Now, the last time... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the last time we met, uh, we did... We didn't, we didn't share it with many right stuff viewers. A few of them, uh, actually quite a lot of them, turned up uh, to South London to see your Scott Capuro's new position to show. To see you in which the is, show. Which yeah, is, yeah, it's a live, a live chat show. And you came along and brought some of your friends from the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who threw things at you and heckled <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the RVT on the Royal Vauxhall Tavern audience can be a bit risque and a bit edgy, but they were... They but it's, were... but it's, it was surprisingly serious. I think people were quite surprised. Yeah. By you know, it was it was a it was a proper interview. Well, it's whatever the mood the guest sets, and you felt like really chatting, so we chatted. I mean, it, the show's about the, the relationship between you know me and the guest and the audience too. But it's really it's more about you know whatever we want to talk about without plugging our work because I think you can read about any celebrity you want online what they're doing. But to hear more about them as a person, I think why, is interesting. Why are you not then being listed as the man to take over from Jonathan Ross? That sounds perfect. Uh, well, a show where you we know, they offered it to me, plugging. but the money's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> they've, got to, they've got to raise the fee because, uh, you know, peanuts. No, I, um, well, I, uh, I think that um, television, maybe, I think I'm a bit too old for TV now. No. Maybe? No. No? How old are you? Can we just change the yeah. subject? Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> Talk about bits no, you're of... very. You've been around for a while, so they're used to you. But I think stick, sticking a, <laughs> sticking someone my age on TV now would seem confusing. No, it would be not. But I, we're just we're going to do another run of the show in April and May at the RVC. Okay. Do you know? Because I, I know in the past you've had uh, Claudia Winkleman yes, been your guest. Yes, uh, Boy George, Peter Thatcher was there. It's the funny night though. I was people there. came along to see Claudia Winkleman and only see Claudia Winkleman. Like they didn't care about the rest of the show. It seemed. And there were a lot of women in the audience dressed up like her. People did. Do you find that fans of yours appear and dress up like you sometimes? <laughs> Those who, right. No. No. <laughs> uh, however, there is one secret I want to share uh, with the audience and indeed with the today's production team, because I can now say, hand on heart, that I've seen Scott Capuro's Willie. Oh. How? There's the, 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 yeah. the lock is broken on the yeah, toilet. Yeah, the lock is broken, broken on the toilet here. <laughs> he saw me go in there and then he was like, oops, I mean, sorry. Well, seriously, how many guys, how many guys can say they've seen Scott Capuro's Willie? About 2,000. Let's not go on. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Once you can still talk to you. <laughs> in English. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Yeah. Great to have you here. Great to have you with us as well for a bit of Friday, man. Let's put some serious talking points as well. This is what's happening on today's show. After the ads, we're going to find out what uh, you make of these skeptics that are planning a mass overdose on homeopathic remedies. Uh, if they all live, what will that prove? If they all die, what will it prove? Uh, no, if they live, that these treatments are a joke, or are these protesters missing the point that homeopathy isn't about treating the symptoms, more about uh, taking a holistic approach, blah, 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 blah. After that, Scott, with the rest of today's headlines. Then, would any, and you've alluded to this already, would any woman watching today marry a man who used to be openly gay? Uh, a helicopter pilot who has been openly gay for 20 years hopes at least one of you will. Why? Because he now has an overwhelming desire to be a dad and feel part of a heterosexual family. He admits he'll continue to have feelings for guys, but he promises you he's going to suppress them in the same way married men suppress their desires for other women. So, yeah, so would you give him a go? Does the fact that he spent 10 years in a sexless gay relationship offer any kind of reassurance. After that, is it the end of the road for foreign exchange trips? Bonkers health and safety regulations combined with fewer youngsters taking languages at school could spell the end for Fritz coming to stay with you for two incredibly long weeks. And of course, your kids having to stay with him and his lovely family. Boo hoo, what a shame. Will you miss exchange trips? What, and this is what I really want to get to, what was your experience of a foreign exchange trip like? They can be pretty grim, can't they? 
And finally this morning, uh, what do you make of this hotel chain offering customers a human bed warmer? Uh, someone to slip between the sheets and get things nice and toasty before you get in. Fancy the idea? Maybe you hate the idea. Give us a tingle and let us know. Here's Kirsty, who I believe turned down the job several times with all the numbers. <laughs> I can't understand paid enough. it. <laughs> not, not paid enough. <laughs> the number to call, as usual, is 0207 173 5555. Calls will set you back a maximum of 10 pence a minute, and that's based on a BT landline call. So your mobile phone charges and other networks may vary. You can email us for free, write stuff at 5.tv. And if you'd like to send us a text, the number is 80088. Text will cost 25 pence plus your standard network charge. Not all messages will be shown on screen. And please always do remember to put TWS before your comment. And of course, please. Please keep your tweets coming into us, twitter.com forward slash five right stuff. Cheers, Kirsty. After the ads, though, we're going to find out what these guys think of the skeptics planning this mass overdose on homeopathic remedies. Assuming they all live, what are they going to prove? That homeopathy is nonsense or a lot safer than many conventional treatments. We'll find out what you think after these ads. How many homeopathic Arnica tablets would you have to buy to get a single molecule of Arnica? Seven, seven million, or seven million, billion, 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 billion. Find out in three.